Good evening, everyone, and thank you for your patience. We just wanted to make sure that everyone can get on this evening. So we're just waiting for a few seconds just for the last few parents to join the meeting and just thank you for your patience. OK, next slide, please. Well, um, I hope this uh, this meeting finds you well, and um, it's really unfortunate we can't have this in school this evening to speak to you personally. But virtual is the way forward now, and how the school sort of continues to work. But you know, thank you for your support, and um, I wanted to really sort of talk a little bit about sort of the work we've done to make sure that transition has been as smooth as possible. And um, we talk about being at the forefront of high standards, and I hope you found the work we've been doing thus far really supporting students to make sure that the transition is smooth as possible and information on the website phone calls to our primary schools and these kinds of evenings are really important to make sure that you are really satisfied in terms of you know that smooth transition into from primary into secondary schools and you know we know the difficulty around having not having the students in for the day and not being able to speak to you this evening but please be rest assured that we have spent lots of time on making sure that transition be really smooth for the children in september and our sort of all our thoughts and all our sort of work we're doing around to make sure that it's a smooth passage into secondary school. So um, can the next slide please? So I think this is the slide that we spoke about in September on our opening evening and I just want us to talk a little bit about sort of the school's vision and we talk a lot here about high standards and about being at the forefront of education and I hope you've seen that in the work we've currently done with our year six transition in terms of the work on the website, information evenings, and making sure we spoke to you know, to parents three or four weeks ago around this evening about just reassuring everyone that um, we are thinking about our year six into sevens and you know not having this transition day has sort of made made us really think about how September will look and making sure that students have that support that is really needed when transition takes place into a secondary school. But, you know, I, I know that letters really went down well in terms of what houses they're in. But please, um, please, this evening is about making sure that the information you receive in detail, um, you fully understand. And there's sort of a question and answer session at the end of my presentation. But please make sure you use that sort of um, toolbar in front of you where you can ask questions this evening and going back to sort of the school's vision we've seen the journey of the kba uh, congratulations on getting a place this year it's um it was a record applications um for this year and um it's uh, it's been a a real journey in terms of what the school's achieved in terms of exam results at key stage four and five but also how the school shaped its sort of curriculum and what we offer for students and i think that's what's been really come through in terms of our parent discussions and why the school has become so popular. Yeah, we, we, we make no bones about it. You know, we, we have a no excuses culture. We have no shortcuts, no limits to what we can do. And we are, you know, we I think the, the key thing of the school is that we make sure that students don't waste any time in learning. And I think that has what's gone down so well with parents that we tackle behaviour head on. You know, we have no disruption, you know, in lessons. Teachers can teach, students can get on. It's a safe learning environment and that's sort of crucial. And that's what makes great schools and great communities. And this is what this is this evening. It's about talking to our community and supporting our community of parents that are joining us in September. And you receive lots of information this evening. And it's really important, please, that you play a massive role um, supporting us into making sure students fulfill their potential at KBA. It's a seven year journey and I make no bones about that. We want all students to stay on our sixth form and have that seven years of learning education at KBA. And this sort of vision map has really um, sort of really come to the forefront over the last year in terms of our results put us in the top five percent of schools in the country both at key stage four and key stage five and i want to sort of look at our sort of the dna of this school that you know doesn't matter where you come from doesn't matter what village you come from what street you live in Ketrin, we really believe that all students can achieve at kba and this evening you'll hear about some of the structures and the systems that have really helped support students and you know we really believe that every student deserves a first class education and the minute they step from the school, that, that's what those students deserve. And it doesn't matter that they're going to come to a different school in September because of what's happening currently. 
you know, students will get the broad curriculum, that thorough teaching and learning. And you see in my vision slide about aspirational teaching and learning. That, that's what the KBA has been renowned for. We have 10 staff currently working for Oak National Academy, which is the, the government school that's online school. And that's been a testament that we've been selected for that because of our quality of our teaching and teaching and our learning. And you'll see that I have a, accountability and high standards in all that we do. And, you know, that is what the sort of the school sort of stands for about high expectations, high standards. It doesn't matter if it's about lunch time, it's about the break time or lesson times, everything we do is the highest possible standard. And it's that, that born sense of that culture of ambition that the minute students start at KBA in September, it's that seven years to make sure that they all fulfill their potential. And that's what this school's about. And that's what we're really proud of what we've achieved thus far. And um, we know we can't thank you enough for your support already. I know lots of you have emailed in about how great it's been in terms of communication letters. So thank you for your support already and um, it's going to be sort of a great partnership going forward over the next seven years and please this school is about working together with its parents in this community so email staff email respected you know, members of staff linked to, to year seven it's really crucial that we over communicate but also we're in constant dialogue and um, you know you can see that some of you have you've, have um, joined the KBA Facebook page for parents that my PA is one of the administrators. So you get current information. We have the Twitter page. We have a regular sort of web page is really updated. So we're trying to really communicate, even though we're working remotely with our with our parents. Um, can the next slide, please, Steve? Thank you. So this evening you hear some key staff. Um, you hear from my deputy principal about teacher learning and about, about our remote learning. So we've been really leading the way on remote learning. Lots of live lessons, engagement figures are really high across the school since the March 16th lockdown. And one of the things I sort of really want to emphasise this evening is that what we know next year is that it's going to be a year of adapt adaptability, a year of flexibility. And one of the things that the school have, is working really hard on is to make sure the provision of teaching and learning education is really high quality in the school, but it's just an equal measure if we go into a lockdown or if a bubble closes. And I'll talk a little bit more detail at the end of how that will work. But please, I can't stress the importance of um, IT in every household and you know having that support at home through a laptop through through you know through um, the internet it's going to be really crucial next year and you know I really want to push this I, I know it's a sort of a it's a difficult topic sometimes to talk about but please one of the things we need parents to sort of um, think about is making sure that their children have all the resources needed to make sure they have high quality provision at home and one of the things that school are providing if we go to bubbles if we have a lockdown is about live teaching which would be done obviously through the school into sort of into what's needed is laptop so please can you think carefully about that and um, making sure that all children have that kind of provision anything you need support on please email caroline hawthorne and the school can support uh, with families but i can't you know echo that enough that we really need sort of um parents to engage in terms of thinking about the resources for their children and um, I think a laptop should be the top, top of the priority. It doesn't need to be expensive but it's going to be needed in terms of the year we're going to be facing next year. Um, then you'll hear from Phil Henton who's Vice Principal of the Academy uh, on leads on behaviour and safeguarding, how sort of our um, zero tolerance behaviour system works at the school and our standards on terms of homework and lateness and all the things in terms of what makes a school quite unique. You'll hear from Sean Cowley, Vice Principal, on the use of knowledge organisers and data and our performance. Uh, Ian Holmes, Assistant Principal, on our curriculum and what students will study come September. And you'll hear from Caroline Hawthorne, who's Head of Year 7, about how the transition will work in September and how we'll make sure that um, students have as good a transition as, as humanly possible in this sort of difficult time. So I'm just going to pass on now to um, Richard Short, Deputy Principal of the Academy, to speak about remote learning. And I'll speak to you at the end of the presentations. And again, please, any questions, please feed them through to the system. OK, take care and I'll speak to you shortly. Hi, good evening. Um, so it's my um, it's my pleasure to talk to you briefly about teaching and learning. Um, as Mr DeSalvo has quite rightly said, it is our uh, core business. Um, I think what's um, exemplified um, what Mr. De Salva is talking about in terms of our DNA, what makes us the school that you have chosen uh, for your son or daughter, is the fact that we approach our teaching and learning with a sense of courage, um, integrity and compassion. And I think this is borne out um, in, in terms of the way that we've responded uh, robustly to, to the, the current um, COVID crisis. 
you know, I'm mindful of what I talked to you about tonight um, is not, uh, we hope, um, a five or seven year scenario. Um, but what I am going to talk to you about is uh, really how we have, um, how we've um, ensured provision of state consistent um, and all the things that you can see there in terms of high standards and achievement um, haven't um, been uh, put to one side during this uh, difficult time. I'm also conscious that um, our uh, perhaps what, what you uh, read about in the media uh, or what you see on, t uh, on television uh, and quite possibly what your experiences are of primary school um, uh, support um, will, will, will uh, broadly differ. Um, and certainly some of the, the, the stories online um, and in the news are very much about a very different experience for, for learning for, for many, uh, many students across the country. And I think um, Mr. De Salvo has made it quite clear that I think as a school, we are at the forefront in terms of um, the uh, provision that we put in place and we ensured it was in place very quickly. Um, Steve, if you could do uh, the next slide for me, please. Thank you. So um, I'll talk briefly about remote learning uh, and really what that has uh, enabled our students to do. Uh, clearly, it isn't something at this stage that you, uh, your son or daughter will have engaged with us on, but it is something that um, moving forward is likely to form part of their provision uh, if, um, if there is uh, a need to do so. So remote learning was developed really quickly um, at KBA. Um, and it does go back to what I'm talking about in terms of teaching learning, more as a sense of, of real courage. Uh, many members of staff hadn't delivered live lessons online um, uh, up until lockdown. Um, and so we um, we met the demands uh, of a new way of teaching very quickly. So staff have received uh, and continue to receive um, training on, on the use of IT to respond to, to these needs. Um, as a school in the in, in the largest trust in the country. We work alongside sub, uh, subject specific advisors uh, to ensure content is as rigorous um, and demanding online as it would be as you'd expect it to be in um, a classroom setting. So since the start of the lockdown in March, um, initially staff produced PowerPoint presentation with voiceover um, instructions. We've had access to the United Learning um, curriculum um, materials which have been created by subject specialists and um, additionally as Mr De Savo said we've got a large number of staff who are contributing to the Oak National Academy resources and this is ongoing um, and they're producing live lessons um, and they're producing lessons for that. Um, I think the, the, the singular most positive response to, to, to this situation has been the way that we've used um, live lessons, um, online lessons with students introduced initially with year 12 students in term five and in term six with um, with year 12 and uh, and, yeah, and year 10s. Um, students are engaging extremely well uh, with this interactive form of, uh, of learning and feedback is uh, resoundingly positive. Engagement figures a testament to this successful development. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm telling you this because from September, it's highly likely that students in all year groups, not just um, 10 and 12 are, are, are likely to receive um, online lessons at some point in the year. Uh, equally, as, as, as Mr. Sarah said, if there's a regional lockdown, we will have to respond immediately to that situation. And um, likewise, as parents and, and, and the students will need to respond um, in, the, in the same manner. And therefore, um, remote learning will be a, a, you know, a remote learning scenario will be very, um, will be a, a realistic um, response to this. Um, None of us can know what the future may bring, uh, but we can assure you with confidence that our staff are ready to meet uh, the challenges that lie ahead. Um, and I recognise um, that this is a big ask, um, but with this in mind, I, I would urge you to consider your um, your your IT arrangements at home um, and and to consider the the access that your son or daughter has to um, IT. Certainly what we've um, what we've found um, since lockdown is parents contacting us um, where there may be a number of siblings. It may be that parents are working from home. It might be that there are there is a need to use um, the, the, you know, the, the, the strain on, on one or, uh, or, or two computers is, um, you know, is an issue. And um, and as Mr. Tavo said, we, we have supported 
um, a number of parents, a large number of parents, to make sure that that is running um, as smoothly as possible. But I, we would urge you to to look at um, uh, a, a relevant um, laptop, um, not just in response to the immediate um, crisis that we we all face across country, but more in terms of um, having a resource that is something that will support um, online learning um, and research uh, for years to come. Um, so certainly not a short term, um, a short term measure, something that hopefully um, will, 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 um, will lie, your, your, you know, um, keep your son or daughter in, um, in good stead as they head into their into their secondary career. Um, so please, we, pr we pride ourselves on being um, an inclusive and supportive school. So if there is, as Mr. Salva said, if there is um, a need for support on IT, then please can you contact uh, Ms. Hawthorne? Um, and we'll do what, whatever we can to support and we are mindful of um, differing situations and we will um, do our utmost to make sure that you um, have whatever you need. But I think if you can um, make that investment, um, then it's certainly a, a worthy one. Um, it's, as I say, it's something that will be beneficial for years to come in their, um, in their secondary career. So um, um, beyond, beyond that, um, Obviously, if you have any questions regarding teaching and learning, you can contact me directly. Um, but that's um, that's all for me. Thanks for your time. Um, thank you. Move, uh, back to Mr. Sal. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to pass over to Ms. Henton now. We'll talk about our key values and our behaviour expectations at the Academy. Good evening, everybody. My name's Phil Henton. I'm Vice Principal here at KBA. And the first thing that I want to say to you is congratulations. Congratulations on securing a place um, for your child at um, KBA. Um, just to let you know, only one student out of every three who expressed a preference actually secured a place with us. So you've done very well in terms of um, ensuring that your child has the best possible future ahead of them um, starting now. And I need you to know that our expectations um, start from now. Um, your child's success is not determined by, by how hard they work in year 11, in the year run up to their GCSEs, it's determined by how hard they work um, from the very first moment that they step through um, the academy doors. Um, some of what I'm gonna say is hard hitting, but um, what I need you to understand at all times is that everything that we do is driven by our desire to ensure that children leave us with the very best possible uh, future ahead of them. OK, so um, can I have the next slide, please? So our core values um, drive everything that we do. If we have the next transition. So what underpins everything at Kettering Buckler Academy is respect. And respect is something that we um, expect from all of our students and from all of our staff and additionally from all of our parents. So we need to make sure that respect underpins everything that we do so that we have the type of environment which is conducive to fostering positive relationships and to ensuring that everybody within our building feels respected and is able to go about their daily business in a safe and orderly and happy environment. Next transition. We also need all of our students to show ambition. So we need every single student to be thinking about what they are going to be doing with their lives in the future. We want to be able to see students after they've left school. We want them to get back in touch with the academy through our alumni programme so that they can tell us about their experiences at university, about the jobs that they've secured, um, about the successes that they've had in their future lives. But again, that is driven by ambition and we'll do a lot to ensure that um, those opportunities are made clear to children. So, for example, next Monday, um, we have our virtual career and higher education fair. So you are able to um, take part in that if you wish. We've got a, a wide range of universities, higher education establishments and um, both local, national and international employers who are giving talks throughout the day virtually. And we are trying to instill ambition, as I say, from the day that your child has found out that they've got a place with us. Next transition. And finally, of course, 
um, what we need to ensure is that children show the determination to continue trying to do something, even though it is difficult. The, one of the key things about learning is that, you know, at times your child will find things difficult. At times they will feel as if um, work may be too tough for them. It may be getting the, the better of them. That is the moment when they need to show the determination to keep going, to keep working, to keep trying hard. They will need support from you. They'll need support and get support from their teachers but they need to show determination. And as we go um, into September, when the future is still um, unknown to all of us in terms of where we're going, respect, ambition, determination, those core values are going to be essential skills. Next slide, please. Okay, so when your children come into KBA, um, our basic expectation is that they're able to learn in every single lesson, in every single classroom. So we have a disruption free learning policy that takes place across the academy. And if you came in on our um, one of our Academy in Action days, you will hopefully have seen that in action. If you are unable to come in, then please uh, be assured that although what I'm going to say now is tough, it's tough love and it comes from a good place. So next slide, please. So when we run as an academy on a normal day, we operate internal exclusion, we operate detentions. So if we have a student who does not meet our expectations, if they are slowing down the learning that takes place in the classroom, we use a system on a normal working day, which is called warn, move, remove. We use internal exclusion. We do not shy away from that. We don't try to hide it from parents when they come to us on open evening, when they come to us on a um, academy and action days and what we need to make sure is that as parents you work with us and do not work against us so there may be times when your child gets it wrong what we need to make sure is that they learn from that experience and they get things right the next time but in life consequences have actions and um, for us, we do use internal exclusion. We do use detention. We do confiscate mobile phones um, if children are seen using them, if they're heard within the building. That is part of what makes KBA such a fantastic place to learn. Um, it's not what we do to try and make it feel like a like a prison or, or like an environment which is oppressive. The vast majority of our students who adhere to our expectations they are able to get the most out of every single lesson and every day in school because of the high expectations that we have. Next slide, please. And those high expectations uh, revolve around uniform. Now, we know that lots of you have questions about uniform and what that will look like and how you can go about ordering that ready for September. And one thing that I will say is at the end of the presentation, Mrs Hawthorne will be talking to you and giving you more information about um, procedures that we're putting in place. But on a normal day, your child needs to look as smart as they can possibly look. So please get into the habit. Teach, if, they, if you haven't got a shoe polishing kit at home, get a shoe polishing kit. Show the kids how to do that. Teach them how to iron their shirts. Try to make them responsible young adults as early as possible. Try to instill those good habits in them. If at any point your child can't wear an item of uniform that is required, the only exception we make is if there is a medical note that gives a reason for that um, non-wearing non of that uniform item. So please do not just send children in without their shoes, without trousers, without their school shirt and expect us then to um, be lenient with them. We will enforce strict expectations. And again, that is why when we have our open evenings, when we have Academy Action Days, you will see as you're in the school, our students, I think they're the smartest students, um, certainly in Kettering, probably in Northamptonshire, possibly nationally. So we're very proud of the way that they look. And we're conscious that they represent us in the community as well. P people in the community recognise our students and we want to get that positive feedback that KBA students are fantastic ambassadors for our academy. Next slide, please. 
In relation to attendance, the figures that you can see there show what the attendance was of our year seven students at the point we went into lockdown. So we have a minimum expectation of 96% attendance for all of our students. 97.1% was the attendance of an average year seven student when we went into lockdown. And 191 students had attendance that was over 96% at that point. Just to put this into context, we have our year 11 Leavers celebration this Thursday evening, and we have over 50 students in year 11 who have had 99% attendance or better since they joined us in September. And obviously it goes without saying, your children cannot learn, they cannot make the progress they should be making unless they are in school, in the classroom. And as of September, what the government have made absolutely clear is that school attendance is compulsory. And we do use a range of sanctions if a child's attendance falls below the levels that we expect up to and including prosecution and fixed penalty notices. So please make sure that you're supporting us in getting your child to school every day. Next slide, please. So I'm now going to pass over to uh, Mr Holmes, who's assistant principal, and he is going to be talking to you about the diet, the curriculum that your um, children can expect. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm just going to talk to you very briefly about uh, what your child is going to be learning when they start at KBA in September. So I just want to reassure you, first of all, that although the government has only just recently released uh, guidelines for how schools can operate in September, the curriculum that we're offering our students is not changed in the slightest. So the slide that we're going to show you now is exactly what it would have been without the COVID-19 situation, because we believe the curriculum is at the heart of our school and the progress we make we made as a school over the last few years. So when students start in September, they'll have 30 lessons during their week and they'll do English and maths every day. So that will be on their timetable every day. They'll do science four times a week. And although there are some uh, guidelines around use of labs under the DfE, uh, so the DfE published last week, all students in year seven will still get practical time in laboratories next year. Uh, students will sit geography and history and a language uh, which they have chosen on their application form and they'll study those three lessons each every week and they'll also have three PE lessons a week. Now during the year students will be taken out for six weeks block so for six weeks at some point during the year your child will not do PE and instead they'll do food technology so that'll give them an 18 lesson block of food technology and every student in year seven will do that. And as well as that, we also uh, pride ourselves on the fact that we still offer kind of other art subjects. So students will also study music, art and design, drama and RE, and they'll have one lesson of each of those every week. So that's for all students in year seven. There will be a few students who it's decided uh, when they arrive at KBA, they need some extra support in possibly numeracy or literacy or reading. And those students will be taken out of some of their modern foreign language, sorry, modern foreign language lessons in order to have that intervention to make sure every student by the time they reach the end of key stage three is ready for their GCSE course of study. Uh, that's the just a quick summary of the curriculum. And I'm now going to think hand over to Mr Cowley. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just want to just uh, first of all introduce myself. My name is Sean Cowley, I'm Vice Principal in charge of uh, performance and outcomes. Um, I've been the school, with the school approximately five years and in that five years we've made a massive transformation. We've come on a huge journey and you've heard of the word expectations a lot today or a lot this evening and I echo those 100%. Expectations in terms of everything we do. But certainly some of those expectations have been transferred to um, working from home and also expectations in terms of the support that um, parents are given. And we've seen a massive increase in the amount of support that our parents and our community has given us as an academy. And we absolutely think this underpins the hard work that we're doing in school, both by the students and the, um, the, the teachers. So what I want to discuss with you first of all is homework. Next slide, please. OK, in terms of homework, um, a few years ago, uh, at the beginning of our real improvement, we made an absolute commitment 
that homework was absolutely fundamental to our curriculum and to the amount of work that we were doing. We absolutely want students to show ambition and determination within their homework. So we expect every single student to complete every single piece of homework that is set. Um, you'll see on the slide at the bottom that it, when homework is set and that the homework is clearly defined, um, if it's not set, then they will result in a 60 minute same day detention. We've seen that that has had massive impact and we have far more students doing work outside of school, which of course is increasing the engagement in school. It's making students more confident the work with the work that they're seeing in lessons. And it's also giving them the opportunity to practice those really important independent learning skills. Your role in that as a parent is absolutely crucial. And we, um, we've, we've placed ourselves at the forefront of using a, an application on mobile phones or laptops or computers called Show My Homework. It's now been rebranded to be called Satchel One. And actually this is the fundamental piece of um, IT or application that we're using to do remote learning. So it's absolutely crucial in terms of everything we do. And when it comes to year seven, we are gonna absolutely ask every single parent and carer to make sure they have a copy of this so that you can see clearly what homework has been set, what the deadlines are, and therefore able to hold your son or daughter to account for getting their homework done, give them that responsibility, but also make sure that they've done it so that you can see exactly what they've done. It's a really crucial piece of kit. Next slide, please. So the Show My Homework Satchel One application can be used online, can be used through uh, an iPad, or probably most conveniently through a mobile device. Every single student will have their own individual homework login and that can be accessed on their app. Every student will have that, be it through the computers at school, through their mobile device, a device at home, etc. And up to two parents or carers can also view the homework of every child in their family through the app or online. If you have or if your son or daughter in year seven has siblings at the school, that's the secondary part of the school, then all of those um, those accounts will be viewable on one location. OK, I myself as a parent um, use this and use this daily to make sure that my son who's in year nine is up to date with all of his homework and make sure that that's absolutely kept 100%. There's the opportunity to communicate with teachers through that app so students can comment on the homework, but it is absolutely vital. And I would really, really, really um, advocate this application when it comes to year seven and to make sure that everybody's got it. OK, next slide, please. We also want to inform you as much as possible on a daily basis, on a sort of live feed, exactly what the achievements are of your sons and daughters, um, what the school reports are, of which you'll get a, a number of academic reports throughout the year, what attendance is like, and whether or not there's been any behaviour incidents. And we want you to have that as live information. We also want you to know, without having to go to a paper copy, what lessons your sons and daughters are in. So again, another very simple school application that can be accessed on your phone is called School Gateway. School Gateway provides all that information in one platform. It provides live information on behaviour, attendance, academic performance, all of the academic reports, which are emailed to you directly from home or to home, sorry, um, are stored on there. So you've got a record of exactly what the progress your sons and daughters are making throughout their time. All we require is we require an up to date email address. You would have provided that email address um, in terms of um, through your application and you've used that email address or we've used that email address to contact you with a link for this here. So it should be very, very straightforward to get that. And again, I urge every single parent, please make sure when it comes to year seven that you download that app for free or you get it via um, a web link so you can use it on a laptop. Again, most people use it through their mobile device. OK, next uh, slide, please. Something that we introduced approximately uh, two years ago was our knowledge organisers. Now, this is a, a thread that runs throughout the entire school, well, in terms of year seven to ten, most definitely. And what you'll see if you were in on a normal school day is every student in year seven to ten walking around with a, uh, a pack and that pack contains a knowledge organiser, a knowledge organiser is basically an in-house designed um, book that has the fundamental knowledge for all of the topics that are going to be delivered from September to January, February in the first instance. 
In fact, it's all of the information, the fundamental information that's required from September up until the mid-year examinations. And then students get their second book when it comes to January, February, and they get the end of year assessment knowledge organiser. It's an, a knowledge organiser book that you can see uh, that every student has. We have online versions so that parents can see. And that is absolutely fundamental to everything we do because we understand that knowledge is power 100% at KBA. Many of the homeworks in year seven will in fact be knowledge organiser homeworks and will provide students with a self quizzing book to make sure that they're able to um, work through that knowledge organiser and able to write down very key definitions because we understand if students don't have the, the fundamental knowledge and um, the fundamental keywords, the fundamental definitions, then they will not be able to access the more difficult concepts. They'll also um, be included in that, in that book, book, sorry, in that pack, a vocabulary booklet and a bookmark. And there'll probably be extra items that we add to that pack on a weekly basis to make sure that every student has all of the information that they need. OK, I'm now going to hand you over to uh, Mrs Hawthorne. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Caroline Hawthorne and I'm head of Year 7. Um, it's been lovely to be able to speak to so many of you so um, already. We've had quite a few phone conversations and exchanged lots of emails. Can I please encourage you to keep um, emailing me with any questions that um, arise after this meeting? I'm always going to be able to answer as much as I can. So today is a bit of a different day. It should have been our year seven, year, uh, year six into seven transition day. But sadly, due to current restrictions, we've not been able to provide that for our year sixes this year, which is it's very sad and very frustrating because we would have liked to have given the same opportunities that everybody else has had. However, we are now in a position where we're going to be able to schedule some transition time for students before they join us at the beginning of September. Um, so Braveheart and Griffin students, you're going to be invited into the academy on Tuesday, the 1st of September and Phoenix and Viking students, you're going to be invited in on Wednesday, the 2nd of September. Mr. Freya, could you flick to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, could you please ensure that this date is in your diary because it's really important that your child attends with us because with with everything that's happened, I imagine that um, anxiety is a little bit higher and they're more nervous than a normal year group would be. So it's a perfect opportunity for students to familiarise themselves with the building, to meet each other in their house and their form. Students will be told of their form and their form tutor during these transition days. More arrangements will be sent out to you via email in the coming weeks. There may well also be special arrangements put in place by Mrs Thomas. I have been speaking to her today. She is our SENCO, so she may be putting in special arrangements for those students who have special educational needs or disabilities. But we will also be sending you more information about that in the coming weeks. You can I have the next slide, please? So we have already discussed something about uniform and it really is um, huge in our community that KBA students are respected and, and recognised due to their uniform. Unfortunately, due to again, due to current restrictions, we've not been allowed to put on so, um, sizing events for blazers, skirts, school jumpers or PE kit um, because we've not been allowed to invite students into the academy or to share clothing. But what we can ask now at this point is to ensure that your child comes into school at the beginning of term wearing black trousers. At the moment, we would request not to girls not to be wearing skirts because black skirts are no longer part of our uniform. When we can try on and purchase more clothes, um, the um, skirt that will be requested will be the it's a grey and black tartan skirt, which is a school year issue skirt. So black trousers, black shoes, which are polishable. So leather or leather look, please. We do not allow students to wear trainers, to wear canvas shoes or boots. And students will be asked to remove those um, items if they do come into the academy with those. Um, they're also requested to wear a white shirt, which is the formal style shirt with a stiff collar so that they can wear the tie. The top button does need to be um, buttoned up and students will be asked to do so if, if they come into school with the button undone. We will be able to order ties as of tomorrow. So um, details of how this is going to happen will be emailed out to you tomorrow morning. So if you can order your house colour tie from tomorrow morning and students will be given those on the day when they come in for their transition visit. Thank you, sir. Can I have the next slide, please? 
So on a normal school day, we um, ask that students are within the academy by 8.25. The school doors are actually locked at 8.30 and detentions are given to any student who is um, late after 8.30 unless um, a written or verbal confirmation of a justifiable reason has been provided by a parent. However, at the moment, we believe there may be staggered starts for students, but again, we're in a situation where we will need to continue to feed you more information as and when we have that and have it confirmed. Students will be um, having six 50 minute lessons per day. So that would be a registration period, which is approximately 30, but that may vary. And then two lessons for 50 minutes each, and then a break, two lessons for 50 minutes each, and then lunchtime, and then the last two lessons until home time at three o'clock. Thanks, sir. Can I have the next one, please? Mr. Freya, can I have the next slide, please? OK, so I just wanted to talk to you quickly about the Accelerator Reader programme, which we run within the school. So I know that some primary schools um, actually run this. I know Brambleside definitely does. So this is a programme which um, supports students learning. And we know that loads of research tells us that um, um, reading underpins every subject. Mr. Freya, could you flick over to the next slide again, please? And thank you. Sorry, that was a bit confusing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, all students will be asked to read for a 20 minute period during the day and then they're encouraged to read as much as they can outside of school as well, but a minimum of 20 minutes. The Accelerator Reader programme suggests books to students um, which are suitable for their reading age. So students will undertake a um, small assessment task when they arrive with us at KBA and then uh, books are allocated to them which are within their reading age range. They read the book and then they undertake a quiz which contributes towards their word total for the year. Um, so we, we celebrate and we reward Accelerator Reader millionaires. This year, I've just calculated it today actually, we have a grand total of 41 Year 7 uh, Accelerator Reader millionaires and two members of the Year 7 team um, staff as well have, have managed to get their Accelerator Reader badge. Our highest reader this year is uh, a year seven boy in Phoenix, and he's managed to accumulate 4.4 million words to date. That will grow, I imagine, over the summer holidays, but he's, he's heading towards 5 million, which is an outstanding achievement. Mr. Freyer, can I have the next one, please? Thank you. So this is this is Jacob. He's been celebrated by the Accelerator Reader programme. He's one of our Viking students, but he managed to reach a grand total of 12 million words last year, which is just phenomenal. So well done to Jacob. Challenge your, your children, please, to see if they can exceed the 12 million words. Thank you, Mr. Freya. Okay, I'm really conscious there's been a lots of information this evening. So this presentation is recorded and you can re-watch the presentation um, to find out information that you may have missed or you want to sort of go through the presentation again. But I think it's important that we give as much information as to parents as possible. And I know that's a lot to take in. So some sort of questions sort of I'd, sort of I'd answer, which I've been reading in the background, is that um, transition day. So uh, on transition day, students don't have to wear a uniform. They can come in in casual wear on the transition days. And it, that is a, really about making sure the students see the school uh, in terms of how it will look in terms of September opening, which will be a little bit different. Um, I think like Mr. Holmes said at the start of the presentation that the curriculum will be a fully embedded curriculum. So students won't miss out on any subjects at all uh, regarding the sort of uh, bubbles that students will be in in September and more information about bubbles will be shared through the letter in terms of to parents about how that will look. The school have done the plans already for September opening. We've been very fortunate to, to work with the sort of uh, the trust around the school's opening, but more information to parents about how that will look will come out in the next couple of weeks. But what will be very clear on those transition days is making students sort of uh, customised to the routines, the staircases they follow, entrance into the school and how the school looks in September. Now, with the curriculum, the only subject we see having um, a bit of a disadvantage is PE. Um, we're still waiting for some guidelines around what sports students can do in September and about how that look. But apart from that, every other period at like the 30 period week will be a normal school timetable for the students. Now, when students have PE lessons, students are able to come into school in their PE uniform. 
Um, so please don't worry, you know, because what we don't want is students changing in change rooms. And this is all about keeping children safe and staff safe. And again, I think what's echoed for my uh, colleagues this evening is that we are part of the biggest trust in the country and we are very fortunate to get some real expert advice around schools opening. We've opened really successfully with our primary children, so reception, um, year one and year six and our key worker students and we've had a really you know big turnout of our year 10 and year 12 so the school's in a really great position to open the, the building in september all our students we're making final final arrangements this week around break time and lunch times and support will be needed around sort of the expectation of students around break and lunch and the normal lunch and break we have which is great in our academy will be sort of minimized in terms of keeping the bubble safe and that'll be shared in the letter in the next couple of weeks so I'm just going to go over, over a few sort of points that I know some of you have asked in the background. And I've just tackled transition day in terms of uniform. School opening. So that will come out in a letter to you about what time year sevens will be expected to come into school. Again, we're, we're having a staggered start for to make sure that students don't mix in bubbles. So that will come out and how that will work. Students will be taught a normal curriculum in their bubbles. They'll have access to all expert sort of classrooms. So students will be taught in a bubble area. So those of you on the tour, students will be based in one of the wings. So for example, year seven might be based in the humanities wing and staff will collect students to take them to their expert classrooms. So the music classroom, the art barn, the IT suites, obviously the PE sort of um, sports from an AstroTurf when we know what possible is with our sports. So please don't rest assured that the arrangements are in place and that will come out in the letter. Now, lots of you have been quarrying about the Hamilton coach services and the guidelines I've read so far that, that the coach service should run and what they're talking about at the moment is about how that will look on a coach. And the guidelines I've, I've read so far, and this has not been published yet, is that on a coach, students will be sat next to their uh, year group friends. So year sevens will sit with each other with the social distancing in place on the coaches. Now, that's not come out yet and we're waiting for that sort of confirmation. But that's what I've been reading so far. And please, that is only my take on what I've read so far. Further guidelines will come from Hamilton coaches to parents next year, but I expect the coach service to run next year. Now, uniform obviously has been the most difficult thing sort of um, to organise over the summer. We'd usually obviously have our sizing events and there's been sort of work with the trust around how students can try on blazers and obviously skirts and and at the moment, it's about the expectation of what we heard tonight about the white shirt, tie, black trousers for boys and girls. And then more guidance will come out about how we can have students into the academy trying on blazers. So please bear with us on that. And I think that's going to be an issue for all schools in September about having the uniform, particularly around for us, the blazer and the new check skirts for girls so please um just bear with us while we communicate that um accordingly um, i know some of you asked your siblings you know uniform sizes please by all means order those uniforms if you know the sizes um and uh, please sort of uh you know if you can where possible you know please if you know order but if you don't don't worry and we'll organize that sort of in due course uh clubs lots of you talked about extra curriculum. we have a great breadth of sort of uh, clubs but what we're going to do for the first three weeks is have no clubs the first three weeks while we see how the school shapes in terms of the staggered start finishes, the coach services. And I think it's just sensible just to wait until we see how this works in September, because it is new to all of us in terms of how we open the school. Very confident in terms of keeping children really safe and the bubbles not mixing. You know, we're doing lots of work in the background, but with clubs, I think it's sensible not to start clubs after three weeks. I think just listen, bed and get students feeling really sort of motivated, safe in the academy. You know it works really well before we see how the sort of the clubs will work. And I know I'm very conscious this evening, we've talked about IT and the need to buy laptops and predicting the future. Yeah, look, no one can predict the future, but I think what's very clear is that you know, we could we've already seen how sort of Leicester has been a lockdown. I know we read the paper and the catching is a high priority area. I think we just got to brace ourselves for, you know, a potential lockdown in Kettering during the course of the year. You know, bubbles closing. So students, if we have two confirmed cases, a bubble has to close. So year seven have to go home. So it's about that making sure that whatever happens, students don't lose 
you know, an ounce of learning, a, a minute of learning. They, you know, they get their IT, there'll be live lessons for students at home. And that's why the IT is so important to make sure that whatever happens and look, it might not happen, but if it does, the students have access to learning automatically. And, you know, part of the trust we're looking at is a, a curriculum that is online with lots of live teaching, voiceover PowerPoints, lots of quizzing, assemblies in the morning. So a normal day structure will sort of take place for those students and we'll be sending out over the summer, a lockdown sort of process to parents to follow and that will sort of um, follow sort of um, guidelines around local lockdown and what will happen with the school when we know what will parents will be shared, what will happen in terms of. So there's an automatic process for our parents. So please just try and sort of preempt what could happen next year, but more importantly, making sure the students have the resources needed to access the high quality sort of education we'll provide for students in any case of a lockdown or a bubble closure. So I'm very conscious, lots of information. I've tried to chat, tackle some of the points that some of you raised. Um, we are trialling next week a Year 7 Parents Evening for our current Year 7s, so a virtual Parents Evening. Again, thinking ahead that, you know, we have a, an early sort of tutor meetings with Year 7 parents and their tutor. That looks likely to be virtual, but we'll make sure that is, um, we trial in next week to make sure that the process are in place ready for September. So I'm conscious in the back where my colleagues are answering questions left, right, centre, but Mr Henton, any questions directly to me that you'd like me to answer or are you, I'd like me to sort of share with parents? Um, no questions for you directly, Mr. Salva. You've covered um, points about the um, bus service and the uniform. That's what most of the questions are in relation to. I think just the key thing for parents is that we will continue to send updates. And what we don't want to do is to give any misinformation at the moment. So, uh, you know, we understand that parents have lots of questions, but information about uniform buses, further information will come out as soon as we um, are able to share that um, securely. Okay. What one thing is for certain that um, all students will be back in school in September. I think I can 100% sort of guarantee. I think that the appetite is to get all students back in. And I think that the guidelines we've um, we've read is that all students will come back into school unless something very dramatic happens. But the plan for the school currently, the, the plans we put in place this week, and that's been shared with staff this morning uh, in our middle leadership meeting is about how the bubble system will work in the school. When that's all finalised, that will go out to parents. And I um, foresee a large town hall meeting for parents from year seven to year third to talk about how the school opens all students with staggered starts and how the sort of bubble system will work in school and how we'll make sure that students are kept safe alongside our staff members, but also the students have the sort of full education they deserve in September. And that we really can't wait to have the students back and have some routine. I think likewise, speaking to some parents out there, I know that it'd be great to have the students back into some form of routine and education in September. But I hope that tonight has been really informative and you can see the systems and structures that the school has put in place to enable the sort of the the rapid rise in terms of outcomes, but also sort of setting the tone to being one of the best schools in the country. So we've been laid sort of uh, so bare tonight in terms of what we, we place. And we, we make no apologies for our hitting, hard hitting sort of policies and behaviour because every parent I know wants their children to have an disruption free learning in the school. And that's what makes KBA so great. So you can sort of see the sort of the vision statement on the sheets, you know, sorry, the presentation in front of you with our values and how that has shaped the school that is today. And um, I just want to thank you for your time this evening. You're part of this KBA's community and um, please, it's about asking questions to Miss Hawthorne, emailing the school, anything that um, there's not been answered this evening, please continue answering. We'll stay online and answer any questions, but just say thank you for your time and um, we look forward to seeing all the children in September. And again, more information will be communicate, communicated in the next couple of weeks and um, live event meeting will take place nearer the time when um, we have fully embedded all our processes ready for September. OK, take care. Have a great summer and we can't wait to see you in September. Take care. Bye bye, everyone.